it may not look like there's anything bad going on here, but there's a piece of the car missing, and if it's not dealt with, things can get a lot worse. <laughs> there's a part on your vehicle that no one ever thinks about. It's made to protect, and in some cases, secure your brakes. If it's rotted, bent, or damaged in any way, it can lead to more costly repairs. This is a backing plate. My name's Len from 1A Auto, and I want to talk about it. If you need any parts, check us out at 1AAuto.com. We'll ship those out to you fast and free. Now let's get into it. So what is a backing plate? Your backing plate is made out of thin metal. It's going to be located behind the brakes on each wheel, and its general purpose is for protection of the brakes essentially to help keep excessive moisture or debris from getting on your braking material, especially in the front. But as far as the rear, if you happen to have drum brakes in the rear or even disc brakes with parking brake shoes on the inside, those backing plates not only protect the braking material, but they also can help secure it. You have to keep in mind that backing plates can easily get rusted, rotted, and weak. With all the road debris hitting them, the protective coating might get worn away. Moisture is going to do what it does to metal. If you had an issue with one of your backing plates, one of the first things that you might experience might be a scraping noise while you're driving down the road. You can hear it, or worse. If it's coming from the front, you might experience that even louder, more prominently, whether you're turning left or right. It really depends on which backing plate might be bad. You might think that having a scraping noise coming from your brakes or even that backing plate isn't necessarily such a big deal, but having an issue with the backing plate can actually cause damage to other parts, costing you more time and money in the long run. If there was an issue and debris did make its way onto your braking material, it could cause some issues such as a grinding noise, a scraping noise, or even premature brake wear. If it gets in between the brake pad and the brake rotor itself, you're gonna start hearing a noise and eventually it will wear into that area and it could potentially cause some serious issues with the brakes. So if you start hearing a noise, you definitely wanna make sure that you inspect that ASAP and clean out the area. Not to mention on some vehicles that have a rear differential like this one right here, you're going to have parking brake shoes located behind your rear rotor. Now with this being a rear differential, it's going to have axle bearings and axle seals out at the very end of each side of the differential. Inside of that area, there's going to be fluid. If that seal was to go bad due to dirt and debris making its way up onto the axle where it goes onto the seal, it's going to start leaking out and affect those shoes. Now, replacing your axle seals on most differentials isn't necessarily the hardest job. It's just a little bit labor intensive. You will have to remove the brakes, the axle, and to remove the axle, you have to drop the differential cover in most cases. Not just that, but if any oil or grease did make its way onto any of your friction material coming from your brakes, it's going to cause a braking issue. Your brakes function by creating friction, and of course that's going to create heat. If there's a lubricant in between the two friction materials, it's going to slip instead of grip. So of course, when you do step on the brake, all the other wheels are going to be doing their job, and one of them won't. So you'll probably find that you have a pull in some cases. You could also have the opposite effect. Rather than having a wheel that does not actually brake as it should, you might have one that does a little bit too much braking. As I had mentioned, if gear oil made its way onto the shoes, it's going to get absorbed into the braking material. This will cause it to swell. If that material happened to swell, it's going to take up the tolerance between the drum area of either the rotor or just the drum itself, depending on what type of brakes you have. And when that happens, now you're going to find that you have an overheating condition. If you're driving down the road, you might not even really notice it. Your car engine's pretty powerful but you might have a weird smell coming from one of the brakes. Other than that, if you happen to raise your vehicle up a little bit and try to spin that wheel, it might feel as though it's kind of binding up a little bit because those shoes, like I said, expanded and now they're holding onto that brake drum material. Also, if the backing plate is rotted in some way on a vehicle that has shoes like this, the mounting hardware or the pins that come through from the back side of the backing plate through the shoe with a spring and a little clip could potentially come pulling through that backing plate, in which case the shoes themselves are going to be able to wobble around and that could be potentially very dangerous overall because if the shoe could shift, it might get jammed up and it might lock up that brake on you. Looking in this area, you can tell the damage that having a bad backing plate can cause. The mounting hardware for this shoe right here is extremely rotted in comparison to the one that's on this side. The backing plate along the backside here is still in fairly good condition. It's a little rusted, but there isn't really much area for moisture to make its way in. Along the front, well, you can see exactly what's going on. 
Something I've heard is that some people think that the backing plate is part of your rear differential. And to fix it, you'd have to replace the entire differential. Although backing plates are attached to the rear differential, it's a completely separate part. It can be replaced relatively cheaply. On this particular vehicle, what you would want to do is safely raise and support, remove the wheel and those brakes. Now, after you have the brakes out of the way, you should have a clear view of your emergency brake shoe. This can be held in place with several different things, such as pins or something the like. On ours, it just has a couple bolts with some clips. We'll get those out of the way in that emergency brake shoe. Now, at this point, we can start removing the bracket that holds the backing plate to the differential in this instance. First, you want to make sure that you get that emergency brake cable out of the way. Once you have that out of the way, we'll remove the bolts that hold the bracket and move the bracket a little bit. Now we can take hold of that backing plate, give it a little shake and separate that. At this point, we can use some cutters. We'll cut this bad boy up and pull it right out of place. After you have it out of place, the next thing that you would want to do is make sure you clean up the area. After that, we can prepare to put in our brand new backing plate. Luckily for you, ours comes in two pieces, so you can easily slide it right into place, clip the two pieces together and put it in there. After you have it in there, you're going to want to make sure you put the bracket in and of course put in those bolts and torque those to manufacturer specifications. After that, we can continue on with the emergency brake shoe. We'll have that in there and put it in with the two clips. Now that we have the emergency brake shoe in place, we'll continue on with cleaning up the mating surface on that axle hub there. After that's clean, we'll clean the back side of the rotor, put the brakes back together, reinstall the wheel, making sure that we torque everything to manufacturer specifications. After that, you want to make sure you take your vehicle for a road test, listen for any funny noises. Okay friends, at this point, you should know everything you need to know about why you should inspect and possibly replace your backing plate. If it looks like this one right here, you can tell that it could cause damage to other parts on your vehicle, which is going to cost you more time and money overall. Now I hope you liked the video, I hope you found it interesting. If there was something in this video that you think might help somebody, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. If you like the video or love the video, go ahead and smash on that like button for me, it would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe ring the bell. That way they're you. All of your friends can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. Inside or even drum brakes? Why am I flapping these things around? Can I just put them down now? Yeah. One of your brake areas from that backing plate isn't really such of a big, such of a. Take care of it ASAP. Get your parts from us. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Did you get all that? Mm -hmm. <laughs>